Yo, yo, it's Go Radio, joined in studio with the Dreamers. What's up, guys? Hello. What's going on? How are you? Hanging out. How are you? Fantastic. Fresh off the airport, right to the studio? <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah we got less than at, an hour. I got up at 3.30 this morning. Oh, my. Yeah. Why? Why 3.30 in the morning? To I don't know. To, to be here with you. Oh, yeah. Wow. I'm yeah, honored. to go to the airport. <laughs> uh, is this your first time in Minnesota? No. Uh, we played Minneapolis on, I think, two occasions. At least. Yeah, yeah at least two. With Zella Day. We were here. Oh, we were the Griswolds Griswold. a couple months ago. Oh yeah, uh, we do. You like it here? We take that very personally. It's a Minnesota thing. What are your thoughts of our place of living? I get such a great vibe actually here. I uh, last time I went to this cocktail bar and I I'm failing right now because I can't remember the name of it. Yeah, but it was incredible. They had like these little uh, beaker science beakers full of hot rum toddies. Oh my! You had to put on a hot glove to eat to drink them. Jeez, that's kind of what people say when they come in. We have good drinks and good food. So if it's, yeah. it's cold, we got we got that going for yeah. us, though. Totally. You guys are on tour right now. How, how's it been going thus far? It's uh, been going great. We're, we're kind of in the middle of festival season craziness. Mm-hmm. So we're flying here, flying there. Airlines losing our gear. We're <laughs> improvising, making it happen. But it's, it's been crazy. It's been fun. Sounds like there's a story in there. What, what happened? Yeah. Um, oh, there's a few. Well, give, me the, give, me the, <laughs> give me the most, the one with the most serious repercussions. That's what I want to know about. Okay, so last week they, we flew from Seattle to L.A. and they, they lost my pedal board. No. And they sent it to Alaska accidentally. Why? How? how? I, I don't know. But <laughs> we had to play these two shows opening for Weezer. And I, so I didn't have my pedal board. So I was on the phone with them a lot. And it was mm-hmm. like, basically, they agreed to reimburse me for whatever I bought. So I bought like a whole new pedal board all these pedals and like set it up right for the show so for those that don't know a pedal board is basically like this it's, it's a rack of effects for guitar is this a guitar pedal board is what you're talking yeah. about did you end up just buying like the nicest like the coolest <laughs> stuff and just be like yeah this is what i had it's gone well my my claim is still pending with them so oh. no comment <laughs> well, I, I just went to guitar center really that's all I really could do. I know, you're going to go corporate on me. <laughs> yeah. <That's funny. laughs> I feel like us, the fans, the listeners, we have an idea of what tour is like. We see, you know, the Instagram, the Twitter, the stuff. But what yeah. is tour really like for a band with some steam right now? What, like, what's your experience with tour? That is a deep, deep question. We're getting deep. <laughs> yeah. What's tour like? I don't well, know. What's something that we wouldn't it's expect? Like life. There's so much of it. So many different avenues. Yeah, I think we learn how to just be so many feelings. Constantly moving, constantly going. Yeah. There's like never any time to chill. You, you sleep less. Yeah, you you learn to sleep in like two hour chunks. You become like oh, a like cat, war. You know, you okay. just kind of take naps when you can. <laughs> you yeah. don't ever actually just sleep. Lately, Luckily, you are a cat, so it works out for you. <laughs> yeah, the airplane flying is kind of difficult. I think we're nostalgic for last month when we were in a van and just kind of. Cruising, you know, every day, kind of. Yeah, in a yeah you can get a good six hours in on a van. Yeah, yeah you can sleep in the. You, 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 you carry bent, your own vibe. That's okay. Like it's like it's, you know, it's our vehicle. When you're in the airport, the, they don't really have vibes at airports. It's not good vibes there. Our airport's like a mall that you have the option of flying out of. If you ever like, right. when you guys fly, are you guys fly, you guys are flying out of here, correct? We yeah. are. Yeah. Yeah. You, you get there like three hours early. Hit a bunch of. We have like these amazing restaurants in the airport with like local breweries. There's like uh, thousands prices? of stores. It's nice. It's like the Mall of America, but at an airport. It's very nice. just after the show and just party all night. Uh, how them prices? Oh, uh, they're absolutely god awful, dude. Bring some <laughs> yeah. money, but it's it's tight for an airport. It so, was, uh, I was surprised how large the airport is because we were, you know, we wanted to get here on time. It's so nationally the, ranked. From, People love it. Yeah, from, yeah, from our terminal to the baggage plane it was a really long walk. Mm-hmm. We needed but, the exercise. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, because yeah. you're on, you're touring. You don't have time for formal exercise. Performing no. and walking is is your exactly. cardio. Right? Exactly. In addition to touring, you guys have a hit record, Sweet Disaster. It's on the radio numerous times all over the country. That's yeah. dope. That's officially dope. Yes. How did that song come about? Like, what was the process of creating that one in particular? Was it like one night or was it yeah. a week? That was. Uh, it was kind of a a day. One day, I, I was pleasantly surprised that that became the single because it was kind of a personal song i wrote after a night getting drunk on champagne with a loved one and amazing just kind of about how good it feels to let yourself fall apart sometimes and that's the sweet disaster it's kind of about kind of growing up and dreaming about being in a band and all that stuff so yeah sometimes to rebuild you have to tear it down that's my yeah that's my deep thought i like that um on the album 
like I love the album. Like this album does not exist. Incredible front to back, high energy. It's driving. Sweet Disaster sticks out to me because that one, I feel like it's still hype and it has that energy, but you take a little bit off the top. You guys got those trap hi hats in there, like that <laughs> moog, that side chain like bass going on. So yeah. I, I want to break down the album in two respects, if I may be so bold. You may. Musically and then conceptually. So let's start with the music. So sweet disaster aside, like with the driving, the rock, what was your goal on on musical level for the album? For the album, um, we kind of just, we love rock and roll, and we think of ourselves as a rock and roll band. We love punk rock, grunge rock from the 90s, like a big thing for us. But then we also love just using computers and like the things we can do now with that. So we kind of wanted to take the the rock and roll sort of ethos that we grew up on that we love and kind of try to take it into the next thing and make it sound fresh. It works. Is that, that's kind of the concept. Awesome. I'm glad. Yeah, no, I love that you were mentioning the production elements yeah. of that song because that's one of the... It's very deliberate, you know? Yeah. And and it's kind of cool that Sweet Disaster people responded because that was the one I feel like at least, like, stylistically, like, it just felt, like, exactly like what we were what we were trying to accomplish. So. Right. Yeah, it, it is. That, and even that the- marriage of sort of just, like, really new stuff and kind of, like, you know, sort of just an old rock vibe. Too, yeah, that's know? a perfect segue because... So conceptually, because that that song is about like it's the new and the old meeting, and you know to to go forward, you gotta look back sometimes. Another wisdom gem. Yeah, <laughs> tweet yeah, yeah. that if you want. Uh, yeah, so conceptually, missed. what's the message you're trying to convey on this album does not exist? Uh, good question. I don't think there's a message that I was trying to convey. Personally, I think it's all kind of just strings of uh, poetry of moments in life, and uh, it kind of ended up being about about that about growing up and about discovering what it's like to be a person i guess so yeah that if that's if there's a message that's what it is i feel that i was uh, i was reading some other interviews that you guys did i was doing my research you know yeah and you guys were mentioning that you guys are pretty philosophical mm-hmm. uh, this album does not exist the title itself is quite existential <laughs> so would you guys consider yourself like modern day philosophers definitely we love to talk philosophy late at night yeah, and, do you want to do it right now? Yeah, always down. I took a philosophy 101 class Ooh, in college. Did you? Yeah, so we're going to discuss these <laughs> topics on the most basic level for right. the sake of time. Um, obviously, there's more advanced and complex theories out there, but for the sake of that, let's do Multiverse. it. Multiverse. At a basic level, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and if we commit a lo- uh, logical fallacy, forgive us. So are you guys familiar with the trolley problem? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. So I, I, I just this. encountered the trolley problem, actually. <laughs> Are you in, serious? In a video game. I, yeah. I uh, played yeah. a video game for an, <laughs> like, hour, damn, no. an, an, an hour last I night. And the, the, tro- the, trolley, <laughs> the trolley problem yep, was <laughs> in it. So. All right. So I, I got this diagram for those that don't know. So we're going to answer this. I got, I, got, I got the two options. We're going to do it on the basic level. So the trolley is it's going down the hill. There's five people on one. And then there's just one lone guy on another set of tracks. You're at the lever. And you can pull it, and you can switch it from the five people to the one person. But something's going to happen. So, are we pulling? Are you doing nothing and letting the trolley hit five people, or are you going to pull it and let them hit one one person? I want to know the answer. I think in that context, it's pretty easy. You pull the uh, you pull the lever for the one. You you sacrifice the one for the for the depending mix. on who the the one person. So you're, that's you're, true. Yeah, yeah but that's true. You know, that's what that's that's more <laughs> complex, but on the most basic level. So that's utilitarianism, correct? I think that's what. Yeah. From my notes, from my gathered, yeah, from, I've heard that uh, people, when they're asked that question, generally choose what I just did. Like, yeah, pull the lever, mm-hmm. save the five people, kill the one person, unless. And then when you reframe it, mm-hmm. so that it's you're next to, say, you're standing next to a very large man, yeah, and you can push him in, into the tracks, mm-hmm. and he'll stop the train. His body will stop the train. Like, yep. do you push him, or do you do nothing? And then people would say they will not push him. Because, but. But That's then, a very different experience. It's the same thing though, because yeah, the lever is much more thing. passive. This is actively pushing the dude. Yeah. It's the same thing to a computer, but then people they, they choose differently. Man, your self-driving car would choose to push the man. Yeah, they program that into the yeah. Google self-driving car. Yeah. That's another. I didn't even think about to. that in that regard. So, these like these kind of stoner-esque <laughs> philosophical <laughs> questions are being you know they're, they're about to be implemented. That's they're crazy. Important. Google are a bunch of stoners. That's that's <laughs> really. Very, very successful stoner. Yeah, con- well, congrats to them. Avalon Pax, yeah. people. <laughs> I, saw an- I saw another in my notes from like five years ago. I also found this cop out. 
uh, an alternative viewpoint is that uh, sincere moral wrongs are already in place in the situation. Moving to another track constitutes a participation in the moral wrong, making one partially responsible for the death when otherwise no one would be responsible, which that seems like a cop out to me. Yeah, because you know who takes responsibility? Who? Heroes. Damn. Boom. Who sits on the sideline. Uh, not anti heroes, just uh, bystanders, sheeple. no one, sheeple, sheeple, sheeple. No, bench warmers, they sit on the bench. I yeah. like bench. That yeah. was that was not that good of a movie. Do you remember bench warmers? No, <laughs> no, with does? Adam Sandler and John Heater. Not Adam, it wasn't Adam Sandler, Adam Sandler was in Water Boy, yeah, of classic, great film, great yeah. film. The All right, hero <laughs> of the movie, baby. Are right, you going from? Uh, Adam Sandler. Let's get ontological back on track yes. too. So, study of this. existence. You guys are familiar with the mind body problem, then? Yeah. Uh, restate it though. Yeah. So, the mind body problem is like, how do you reconcile consciousness within the physical realm? And I'm gonna give you yes. three options. I, like, like I said, the most basic, and we can we can break it down on a higher level. So then we have uh, substance dualism. The physical body and on con- the conscious and the spirit are two separate things that work together but have separate existence. We have Physicalism, everything is physical, ideas, thoughts, are chemical reactions in the brain. And then my favorite, transcendental idealism. The mind shapes the world we perceive into the form of space and time. Uh, Immanuel Kant, 18th century philosopher, one of my favorites. Yeah, I, I have this quote that I found from my notes. If I remove the thinking subject, the whole material world must at once vanish because it is nothing but a ph- uh, phenomenal appearance and the sensibility of ourselves as a subject and a manner of species of representation. So between substance dualism, physicalism, or transcendental idealism, how do you reconcile the mind-body problem? I can't speak for these guys, but I, I, uh, I'm i definitely a physicalist. Yeah. I call myself that, or materialist. Mm-hmm. Definitely not so much a dualist, because I think there's all kind of problems with that. Mm-hmm. I think that all the, like a computer, your brain is a bunch of atoms mm-hmm. doing a bunch of crazy stuff. Yep. And that the the soul of what your thoughts, you know, exists, but only because of the physical arrangement of all the, the real things that are happening in your brain. Interesting. What do you guys think? Thoughts? I was going to say, I'm kind of in between physicalism and the, the transcendental, the Kant stuff, because, mm-hmm. and I see them kind of overlapping, because, of course, I, you know, consciousness, I believe it's very much just a bunch of processes in your mind that, you know, create this self-awareness. But then I really like the idea of how, um, like, all meaning is, is we, we create it. There's no inherent meaning. Yep. And I kind of, I love that idea, and I love how that branches out into philosophy. Just this sort of, I mean, I don't know, being an artist, you know, or being, doing what we do. Like, we're kind of fixated on that. It's like trying to create meaning, trying to, um, you know, define ourselves. Examination and, and like analysis, awareness, like you said. Exactly. Yeah. All about it. It's, it's an amazing thing that we have that we can do that. Yeah. And we can talk about it. That's cr- like we can talk about these things that make no sense. I know. It's dope. We, yeah. we talk about it a lot. We, we love the desert. A lot of our going back to LA, we drive through the desert late at night. And that's very often like how like we'll, a driver stays awake. We'll just talk about this stuff. I think when people think of like another person or another being an animal, they can think of that as being materialistic or physicalist, mm-hmm. no problem. But then when you think of yourself being that, mm-hmm. it's a, it's like a mind F because yeah. you're like, wait, but I have this experience. I know I do. And it's like so trippy and weird and different. So I think that is kind of uh, the deepest, one of the deepest mysteries of. That's what leads being. me to substance dualism or transcendentalism. I used to be like, what is yeah. that? But now I understand it. Yeah. To a degree. I'm getting weird, though. What do you think? Nice. Still figuring it all out. <laughs> that, that might be the most correct answer. Yeah. You don't have all the answers, Jacob? Yeah, no. You know, it's, it's, a, it's like a Buddhist, uh, it's a Buddhist idea. They say that the, the deeper one goes into the mystery, the greater the mystery becomes. So that's kind of, that's mm-hmm. what, that's what yeah. the rabbit hole of this stuff is. The greater More you know. Of knowledge, the larger your circumference of non-knowledge. But you can't get caught up in that, though, because if you think about it, like, the more you know, the less you know. Does that make sense? Because, like, the more well, you learn, you, like, you end up having more questions. Like, I just jumped into philosophy, yeah. like, what, 18 hours ago, prepping for this? I was like, oh, this is so interesting. And, I, like, I went on, like, a two-hour, like, Google and Wikipedia, you know, like, the Wikipedia train. Like, I was just clicking. Yeah. I was like, yeah. I ended up with, I was like, I forgot about philosophy for, like, maybe two years. And then, uh, and then I was like, oh, my gosh, I have so many questions. So I learned. But now I'm like, I have even more questions. So I feel like it's... 
Like you're chasing the dragon, to quote South Park. <laughs> yeah, but I, I think that's one of my favorite things to do. That's what a human does. They wonder and they chase that dragon, and then they die. Yeah. Yeah, it's not but so bad. It's kind but, of great. But they build glorious. stuff. They discover things. It's like part of it. It's why yeah. that desire is why we have civilization and technology. And to a fault. Music. We're Radio just, station. We're constantly just... Pushing, to the point of the cancer pushing, pushing. of the earth that is just feeding off this land. Wait, what? <laughs> what? I think what you're, <laughs> I think you're a destructionist. Oh, we man. are. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we, that's, yeah, that's what the human race is. We've won. And now we're just fighting each other. Man, yeah, we could stop. That would be nice. Stop fighting. We could stop fighting. We could stop. Yeah, we could have like a sustainable, Leaching. beautiful planet. We could just, we could all just love each other. What it could have should. Let's do that, kids. Yeah, let's. Do we, that. Should do well, we should do that. Well, we should soon because like, yeah, if we don't, nah, let's just kill each other. <laughs> <It's not laughs> let's like, burn it down. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, on that note, you guys are playing our Go Show tonight. If Zeke edits this <laughs> on May nineteenth, two thousand seventeen, and you're watching it before the Go Show, you should come. It's great. If you ah, missed it, dope. it was the greatest show of all time, and you messed oh, up. Exactly. <laughs> It'll be transcendental. <laughs> yeah. No, thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.